Hello, uh, Paul Beckwith. So I'm continuing um, the my discussion on global dimming and how global dimming is being affected by the coronavirus and what we can expect in the near term future as more and more industry around the world uh, shutters, you know, as countries close down and industrial production uh, drops off. So um, before I do go into that, though, I want to talk about a new word uh, that I've just seen, and it's called a COVIDiot. It's a noun, the COVIDiot, uh, one, a stupid person who stubbornly ignores social distancing protocol, thus helping to further spread COVID-19. For example, you know, in of usage, are you seriously going to visit grandma? Dude, don't be such a COVIDiot. Or two, a stupid person who hoards groceries, needlessly spreading COVID-19 fears and depriving others of vital supplies. And in sentence, it would be, for example, see that guy with the 200 toilet paper rolls? What a COVID idiot. Okay, so so there you go. Okay, so, so uh, you know, languages are, all, are dynamic. They're always changing. You know, new phrases, new words come. Other ones go out of use. So, so this will be, I think, the word of uh, 20, 2020, probably. Okay, so let me talk, go to the um, articles that I want to talk about in this video. Just another day on aerosol earth debunked the global dimming dilemma and and probably you know I wouldn't say debunked I I changed the title to all about you know the science of the global dimming science of global dimming or something something like that more descriptive so so this is from scientist warning google the great group scientistwarning.org and have a look so um the global dimming the topic of global dimming it's also known as the aerosol masking effect or AME it's misunderstood, okay? It's used by to promote climate, climate change denial and doom alike. Global dimming, of course, is a very real phenomena, like its glo counterpart, global brightening, okay? Um, but how big is, you know, the effect? And, you know, pan evaporation data showed that, um, you know, if you have a pan of water out in the open, it's gonna evaporate, you know, wind over the pan, matters, humidity in the air matters, but also the sunlight coming down. And as we were adding more and more aerosols to the atmosphere from, you know, heavy industry, there'd be less sunlight hitting it and, and less evaporation from the pan. Um, and then that turned around in the 90s as we cleaned up the air in, in cities. Okay, so, um, you know, it's a constant plot of disaster scenarios contending that we have to keep burning fossil fuels in order to avoid a dimming disaster. Okay, um, you know, we got the six mass extinction underway. Last time CO2 emissions were this high, modern humans didn't exist. So those arguing that we must keep burning fossil fuels exploit uncertainties surrounding the potential impacts of global dimming and brightening. Okay, so we do modeling and we try to figure out, you know, how big is that effect. And um, some studies point to the potential underreported impacts of dimming. Other ones show that cutting pollution won't cause a huge global warming spike. Okay, um, so there's a lot of different studies here. Um, and... You know, there's some studies that are more regionally focused, other ones are global. Um, so, you know, one of the ideas in the Arctic, dimming over the Arctic may be masking some of the already shocking levels of polar amplification. Okay, so we have this aerosol mask, and if you start reducing the aerosol mass, you can get more sunlight coming in. You know, aerosols have a very short lifetime in the atmosphere. Rain brings them out of the sky. It says in just a few weeks, but generally it's about a week or even a matter of days. Okay, so the jury is still out, but there's lots of different information there. Um, and I'll just go down to the uh, key part part of the uh, key, key part of the uh, aerosol masking effect, global dimming. Okay, so James Hansen uh, was one of the first to look at this, uh, and he talked about 
of Faustian bargain back in 2006, stating that aerosols have a cooling effect by reducing solar heating of the ground that depends on the rate that we pump aerosols into the air because they fall out after about five days. It was a BBC documentary called, you know, Global Dimming. that looked at the pan evaporation data and so on. Um, okay, so... So basically, and it talks about, you know, sulfates versus black carbon having different effects. So how much warming is the dimming masking? Okay, that's the key study. So according to some researchers, it's as much as 1.1 1 .1 or 1, 1 degree Celsius. Actually, it, the, their range is 0 0.25 to 1.1 1 .1 degree. You know, there's studies that show that the direct cooling effect of aerosols and the clouds, because they act as cloud condensation nuclei, could be twice as high as previously thought. Okay, but um, basically, you know, it's about half a degree Celsius. That's the most generally accepted number, the most cited number. It varies, published estimates, most widely cited and published very show we have about 0 0.25 to 0 0.5 degrees celsius other estimates are between 0 0.25 and 1.1 celsius okay but the common most common answer is 0 0.5 and there's there's lots of papers looked at in this scientist warning article okay ipcc reporting gives one gives a 0 0.5 the most commonly accepted number but it's still a matter of ongoing investigation Okay, there's projects like the CERN's Cloud Project to try to look at how clouds and aerosols interact and how much dimming they 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 put they do, and uh, you know um, talk so. But you know some of the deniers or doomers say that um, they claim that it's an unsolvable paradox, Faustian bargain. If we were to stop polluting today by just a third, we would experience an immediate and deadly 1.2 to 5 Celsius temperature rise in as little as a few weeks' time. Okay, so we're doing a real-life experiment with this coronavirus shutting the world. It will It's likely shuttering that 35%, and, you know, they're saying we could go up this range, whereas, you know, the, 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 st the scientific number generally accepted is about 0 0.5, so it's much smaller than this number. Okay, um, and that's not what Levy said, okay? Um, now, interestingly, this climatologist, Gavin Smith, he said, you can't assume that net zero CO2 emissions must imply net zero anthropogenic aerosol emissions. And he added that anthropogenic aerosols will not suddenly disappear and make global warming much worse. Well, he's wrong on that count. Anthropogenic aerosols are suddenly disappearing or greatly reducing because of the coronavirus shuttering globe, the globe. And we, we can see, you know, it, it remains in the next uh, few months to see how much of industry shuts down. Is it a third globally? Is it a half? You know, and I estimated some uh, temperature changes that could occur to that in, in this video series, in the first video of, 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 of three. This is the third one. Okay, um, you know, and they actually quote me here, they say this fictional massive rise of 1.2 to 5 Celsius in temperature suggested by Dumas pseudoscience is a completely absurd number in one of, in my video. Um, says B, climate system scientist who reiterates, reiterates that it's more likely to be about 0 0.5. Okay. Um, so... Yeah, and I've already talked about the effect of lower air pollution and the fact that air pollution globally kills about 7 million people. So if we're significantly reducing the aerosols, we're significantly reducing the air pollution and, you know, we're saving millions of lives in a year uh, by by doing this. Of course, you know, how many people the virus takes out, at least th that number is countered a bit by the number of lives saved from reduction of air pollution. I haven't seen anybody mention that um and uh you know then there's uh you know there's some good uh article this this guy david mckay stockholm resilience center said while the total removal of human-made aerosols would lead to a short-term warming of about 0.4 degrees 
an abrupt end to all aerosol emissions at once is very unlikely. As Gavin Smith said, well, they didn't consider a virus, you know, which is abruptly halting aerosol emissions on a very short time scale. Okay, um, you know, we, mo we must reduce both global warming and aerosol pollution, okay? Um, and so we don't have to fear clean air. You know, forests put lots of particles and aerosols up into the air naturally. Um, they can, they, they put these, nature produces abundant particles without any pollution. The trees can do it with zero pollution. Okay, um, and there's some stuff on geoengineering and uh, there's new studies and then they quote my video. Uh, there, there's an update to the article fairly recently um, in which, you know, I talked about in, in my video coronavirus effect on global warming and vice versa. Um, you know, I talked about the 2002 study. Um, which uh, basically raised the daily temperature range about a degree. And here's my estimate. You know, since global dimming from aerosols is thought to be between 0.25 and 1.1, if we take the one number as an upper limit, then the coronavirus closures could result in global warming of about 0 0.06 with regional warming over China of 0.25. That was just when China was under lockdown. So, um, so I've updated this number uh, you know, you know, assuming that, say, a quarter or a half of the globe is shuttered. Um, you know, but this is with the worst case number one. If it's half that, if it's 0.5, then my numbers here would be 0 0.03 and um, more like 0 0.03. And then the regional effects are more complicated to tease out. Okay, so so basically that's the, the gist of it. You know, lots of people have asked me to comment on it so um so i've done that um so just in summary you know i talked uh, at the beginning of the first video of this series i summarized the my best guess numbers for the globe right so if global dimming is the most common number 0 0.5 degrees celsius you know, you shutter 50% of global industry, you know, which might occur, you know, as many countries peak and industry shuts down, cities shut down. So that would lead to an expected warming of, say, 0 0.25 degrees Celsius, half of, half of the 0 0.5 if it's 50% of industry. Now, over land, you have double that rate, about 0.5. Over the oceans, half that rate, about 0 0.125 Celsius. That's direct effects. And then you can maybe double those numbers for indirect effects at the at the most. Um, you need to look at diffuse versus direct radiation. Um, and I pointed out that air pollution is also reduced. So, you know, instead of 7 million people dying per year from air pollution, if half of industry is shuttered, you could argue that was 3.5 million saving, 3.5 million people, you know, so if the virus... Um, killed more people globally than that, it would be, um, you know, the net effect would be down. And, and if the virus um, is like the pandemic in 1918, we're talking 50, 100 million people globally. I mean, that's a question that remains to be determined. So, so those are the best numbers I can come up with right now. Um, people have asked me, so, you know, I've thought about it quite a bit. And those are the numbers um, that I'm talking about. Um, you know, have a look for yourself on some of the, uh, you know, if you Google real-time global aerosol monitors, you know, you can get sort of, you know, aerosol optical depth, for example. You know, you can play a movie and you can see how it changes. This is from, you know, March 2000 going all the way up to uh, February 2020. Okay, you can see how the air, so th there's lots of stuff, you know, you can Google and have a look at this stuff. And, uh, you know, air pollution causes about 7 million premature deaths each year, yearly death rate from air pollution, you can have a look at. And, you know, also climate change, 250,000 people may die each year due to climate change. So um, you can look at that also. And here we got the COVID definition again, which I really like. 
And uh, here's an article. We're not going back to normal. Not anytime soon. You know, one car on the road. Anyway, thanks for listening and stay safe. Bye for now.